It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. And with me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Hey, back in 2017, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act made some significant changes to the tax laws and brought some great tax savings with it. Unfortunately, the uh, rules are scheduled to expire at the end of 2025, though. If that reversion to the old rules happen, what do you need to be thinking about? What do you need to be planning for right now? We're going to cover that and more on this episode. Here's the problem with getting older. I feel like 2017 was last year, <laughs> and I feel like these laws are set to sunset in like a decade. And no, no, no. It's been, time is slippery. And so, yeah, we've been talking about this before. Hey, it's upcoming, it's upcoming. Guys, it's right around the corner. So we're going to help you with what those changes are, how to plan for it. If you have a question for the program, we would love to hear from you, or if you need any help, we're here for you as well. Call or text us 574 222 2000. That's 574 222 2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com is where you can find us. You can reach out to us that way as well. Then all of our social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. Now, if you are hearing about this saying tax cuts, tax cut and jobs act that was passed in late 17, went effect and and one one of 2018 and you're a little bit like me saying wait a second where'd the time go or why in the world would they only put this in here for a few years if it's tax cuts hard code that thing put it in there permanently well it is sort of common for congress in order to get the votes a and in order to well we don't know what the future is going to hold we'll put some big tax law changes in place for a certain period of time and listen if it was a good idea you'll extend it. If it's a bad idea, then you'll let it expire. And yeah, that's what they did with the, with, you know, they call it Trump tax cuts, tax cut and jobs act, or just the current tax cuts. I don't really care uh, what you call it, but it did bring about average savings to the typical taxpayer. Uh, Significant. I mean, we, we do a few thousand tax returns a year. This thing was, was billed as, oh, it's going to save the average family about $2,000 in taxes. It did about that. And then it reduced tax rates for businesses as well. So, but the expiration date, end of 2025. I thought you were going to say, but it was also billed that it was going to allow you to file your taxes <laughs> on a postcard. Do you yeah. remember that? Oh, I do. That did not come to fruition. No, no. no. But uh, yeah, the tax savings were real, weren't they? Yeah. And you know, they, they stick around for this long. You get used to it. You get used to taxes being down at this low level and Maybe, you know, it's like the American uh, way to to complain about taxes no matter what. No oh. one likes to pay them, right? Of course. And uh, it doesn't matter how high they are but um, or how low they are right now. It still feels like, oh, I wish I didn't have to pay these. But here's the thing. The tax laws are always swinging back and forth from low rates to high rates. We've been on the low end of the spectrum for quite a while now. Hey, a couple of, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a special guest uh, tax policy expert, Scott Hodge, on the program as well, talking about, I mean, from Washington, D.C., talking about how tax policy is shaping our lives. But here's a big idea with the, cha- with the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. On the campaign trail, the current, current White House uh, is saying we are going to let these Tax Cut and Jobs Act expire. OK, I believe we believe that the election is essentially going to determine whether these things stay around or they revert back. Now, the White House is also saying we will we are going to let them expire, but we will not let taxes increase for people that make below four hundred thousand dollars. You can't have both. I like and I, that's not a po- political statement. That is you, you can't have both unless because, they're saying that they're going to push something else in in its place, which would be record. That'd be light speed for Congress, yeah. considering <laughs> that they're set to expire a year after the election. And so so here's the deal. What would change? What would change? What are the big changes if the Tax Cut and Jobs Act expires? We're going to hit all you know, we're going to hit all those that are going to impact you. And then what are the planning adjustments you need to make? So let's first talk about the changes. Well, there's two to me, I would put those in two different buckets. One is what changes for the individual and then what changes for the business. Because there were some pretty meaningful 
business changes. For the individual, the, the tax rates are going to change. So when you look at the, the current you know, 10%, 12%, all the way up to 37%, and those, go, those would bounce back up to 10% up to 39.6%. Can I, and not to you know overwhelm you with numbers, but for most people, you're either in the second, third, fourth tax tier. And mm-hmm. so currently, current tax rates are 10%. So after all your income minus your deductions, which we're going to get to because that's going to change too, 10%. And then the next tier is 12%, then 22%, then 24 In the past, uh, before the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, and, and what things would go back to starting in, in 2026 would be 10%, but then 15%, then 25%, then 28%. So not a doubling of tax, but an increase, a yeah. few percent. And, and the biggest increases happen kind of right in the middle range of those tax right. brackets as well. That's, that's worth noting. Um, because you're, you're always trying to pay attention to what is Congress doing with tax laws? What's the White House posturing towards? Who is it that's either in their bullseye that they're trying to help or, you know, unfortunately, maybe put more of the taxes on their shoulders? It's that middle range right there that will be affected the most by the tax bracket changes. And the tricky thing is, as I was doing some research for the show, the, the question is, well, what's the difference, right? What, so it goes from 12 to 15 percent. So as I'm looking at all of the charts, most of the charts say, well, you know, that's a difference of 3 percent. It's not a 3% difference. Your tax on that chunk of income just went up by 25%. Mm-hmm. You're paying 25% more tax than you if 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 things sunset, you'll pay 25% more tax. So, um so this is where you when you look at that and and it gets it actually gets kind of staggering um some of these changes when it goes from 24 to 33%. Mm-hmm. So this is where, as as we're planning for this stuff, you say, well, what is, is there any way, if we're in 24, to shift income to 24 or 25? And and who knows? I mean, this is the this is the challenge because we don't know. You could do a bunch of work in 2024. And nothing changes, and you say, "Well, why in the world would we do anything?" Well, we're gonna get we're gonna get to that, but well, and I think Kevin, you were alluding to something there, though, that um, when we revert back to the old tax brackets, you may find yourself creeping into a higher and higher tax bracket earlier. Yeah. In other words, it doesn't take as much income to get into those higher brackets, and the higher brackets are taking a bigger bite. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. Yeah. The other thing, big change is is the standard deduction and personal exemptions. Okay. And we're, we'll get into itemized here in just a second because that changed as well. But standard deduction um, it, during what what's the no? Look? You're good. You're good. Okay. I'm just getting excited. I'm thinking about the other personal changes. I'm I, I, I'm I'm thinking salt, but you keep yep. going. Keep going. Okay. So the the Tax Cut and Jobs Act basically took the standard deduction and doubled it back in 2017. For a single individual, the standard deduction was just six grand, just a little bit more than six grand. For married filing jointly, twelve grand. Currently, in in, in this year, the standard deduction. Let me get it so I, I have it right in front of me. Almost thirty thousand dollars for a married couple, and again, it would it would revert back to about twelve or thirteen thousand. So it doubled, but um, but also. At back before Tax Cut and Jobs Act, there was a personal exemption. So anyone that was in your household, you got about a four thousand dollar deduction. So back in the old world, okay, um, a, a a married couple, no kids in the household, would get a twelve thousand dollar standard deduction and then another eight thousand of personal exemption. So you'd have about a twenty thousand dollar deduction. Today, that's about thirty thousand. So your deductions also would be going down by a third, right? That's right. These deductions and these exemptions, if you're not familiar with that terminology, this is basically your ability to erase some of your income off of the tax return so it doesn't have to be included in the calculation of how much tax falls into each of those tax brackets. It also means that when you take a standard deduction, just the the free option that the government's given you, kind of the easy button, you don't have to do a long calculation of your own expenses. And I, I know we'll be getting into that into the in next uh, segment here. But the point is, a lot of people have had an easier tax return here in recent years because they haven't needed to keep track of 
medical expenses and mortgage interest and a lot of other things. Um, which are coming back for a lot of people. But again, when we were talking about the tax rates and sort of the sweet spot of who's impacted by that, the sweet spot of who's impacted by these standard deduction changes are, is a typical, typical family. You know, Anyone, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, a, a, a married couple with a kid or a couple kids. And so uh, deductions would be going down if these tax laws sunset. So what are the other big changes? But really, then after knowing those changes, what planning strategies do you need to consider? We've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. Uh, what you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every Saturday morning, also on podcast at the same time as well. But then the reason why it's Broken up the way that it is, is it also airs on a couple local radio stations where we're headquartered, Northern Indiana and Southern Michigan. So uh, if you're looking for more content that's just custom fit, tailored for YouTube, that is uh, more palatable, 10 minutes long or so, well, good news, we've got that as well. Uh, next Y Step videos that air every single day during the work week right here on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. So you're made aware every time we drop new content. If you like the content, like the content, share it as well. We appreciate it. Okay. Sorry. You know, sometimes how your brain yeah. gets detached from your mouth. Yeah. Oh, and then people start looking at you like, what did you just say? Are you serious? That, I thought I was having one of those moments. I'm like, did I just say something? Totally no, I just foolish? got excited because <laughs> when you were talking about the personal side, it, the, the salt tax yep. deduction, uh, that if that goes away, this whole pass through entity monstrosity mm -hmm. i mean oh my word yeah, that's a pain yeah i thought it was the personal exemption that sort of triggered you there no we haven't had that in a while mm -hmm. no but i mean if you, if you look at that when you go from 24 percent to 33 percent uh, and the chart that i'm looking at is it says a nine percent increase it's a 37 percent yep. increase right yep so all right here we go segment number two i'm assuming we're gonna <clears throat> this entire segment still gonna be about changes so so do you want to talk about salt or well where do you want to go and then because at some point it feels like we should talk about the business yeah uh, i was gonna say yeah because it does seem like salt would come next before i don't know if you laid these out in an order for i did but or, it doesn't matter okay um where i was thinking we might go is oh well the people like the personal exemption Mm. Well, the personal exemption was essentially replaced by a doubling Bigger of the child tax child, credit. Yeah. So, but it doesn't matter. So, since we're talking about standard deduction, let's hit let's hit itemized deduction, okay. and we'll go from there. So, didn't we already hit it? The itemized not, the salt not stuff. Really, like, no, the itemized deduction. No, we did salt. the standard deduction. Yeah, we did standard. Deduction. Yeah, but you, you you were saying you used to have to save the stuff, and then you didn't. Oh. Well, that was just sort of a teaser. To now we're gonna unpack it. You get to. <laughs> Be the teacher now. I'm going to pack something here. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I feel threatened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part of the, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act that has gotten so much attention is this SALT limit. Well, we're going to explain what that means. And if the Tax Cut and Jobs Act does sunset, this is going to revert back. So how will that change? There, we're going to help you with that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of The Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out, as well as a lot of other content. Go to YouTube, search The Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there. We appreciate it. All right, so we're talking about all the changes that are set to, to take place at the end of 2025 that are going to impact your taxes. A lot of big changes for individuals, a lot of changes for businesses. And then we're going to help you with, well, should you be planning ahead right now? And if so... If so, how? So we're smack in the middle of those changes. The standard deduction doubled with the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. So if these tax laws expire, sunset at the end of 2025, they they get cut in half, even more than, than that, even uh, a bigger reduction. And so more people will itemize, but that's one of the other changes because within the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, there were some changes to the itemized deduction. So Kevin, you want to share that? Well, yeah, the uh, the salt tax you're saying, yeah, it's part yeah. of yeah, yeah, it's part of the yeah. itemized deduction. Yeah, yeah. so 
<laughs> so I, I, I may I, my my mind is, is 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 spinning here. So when you look at the salt tax, it's interesting because I was thinking of how do you frame this if we're if we're going from big to small. And I would say in Washington there are two different parties, and we don't. No one comes to us for our political advice, so we don't. So there's one party that believes in lower taxes and unbridled spending, and one party that believes in higher taxes and unbridled spending. <laughs> and either way, it's it, it, it's not. I don't know if you guys have noticed, it's not working. Um, that's as that's as political as we'll go. But I'm I I am for you know you say oh. Well, reduce the taxes and that creates more revenue to the treasury and that works. Well, that's good if you can curb your spending or raise the taxes and, and put a little bit more burden on the people, but curb your spending. Well, that, that might be able to work too, but we've, we've never tried either one of those. So this, so, it, so it's a little frustrating to me because I look at all of the energy that goes into tax compliance and it, it's, it, it's seems to me to be, wasted energy yeah I, so there again i'll just preface the interview coming up in a couple of weeks with scott hodge that, yeah. that's his entire that's his bag so yeah we'll get there well um so scott stole my bag then so when you look at the, the at the at the salt tax state and local tax so they're saying you can have ten thousand dollars on your itemized deductions for a salt deduction state and local tax deduction. So you take your state income tax, your real estate tax, the tax you pay on your car, all this stuff, and it can cap out at 10 grand. Well, that's fine if you're, um, if you're an employee. If you own a business, typically you, you, on your personal tax return, you're paying tax on the profit of the business. So you pay considerably more than $10,000 of state tax. Well, if you're paying much more than ten thousand dollars of state tax, you used to be able to deduct that via itemized deductions, and and this took it away. And it really took it away. There's blue states and red states. So blue, um, the, it was the. It, they, oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it was it was the blue st- to to really get to the big the pe- the folks in the big city with uh, the in the blue states. So what these states actually did, and this is probably more than you want to know, but these states said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let you, instead of you paying state tax at a personal level, which is how it's been, you, so the profits, an S-corp, the profits flow through to the individual and they pay the tax. Well, you couldn't deduct your state tax that you paid, so they said, here's what we're going to let you do. We're going to let you pay them and deduct them at a corporate level. So in essence, you got around the SALT tax deduction. Yeah, we were talking about uh, at one of the breaks just the complexity that states have been trying to deal with the, the side effect of this rule, um, trying, to, trying to help individuals or business owners um, just get around this whole SALT cap. But just to, to kind of recap what Kevin was saying there, The state and local taxes, it used to be that you would be able to write off all of the taxes that you paid to your state and local government. And what what else is a local tax? Your real estate taxes on your home. Your, your, the taxes that you pay on your home could be included in that, and it could come to a much larger number than $10,000, depending on where you live, yeah. what kind of house you're, yeah. you're in, that kind of thing. So a lot of people had taxes that they were paying to these other governments that weren't doing them any good on their federal income tax. And uh, it didn't used to be that way. Mm-hmm. This will be one of the, I, I guess you could say, a, a positive to reverting back to the old laws and suddenly maybe you'll be able to write off more of these types of, of taxes on your, your returns. Now, I will say this, CPAs everywhere um, have probably enjoyed not having to remind you to go get the registration out of your car so you can <laughs> calculate the tax that you paid when you registered or, or paid for your plates or anything. That was in that list as well. And it's sort of irrelevant these days when it's capped at 10000 But itemized deductions also include things like mortgage interest, your charitable giving, uh, some of your medical expenses, although the first chunk get thrown out. Um, and, and so when you throw all that into the hopper, the question is, does that come to a larger dollar amount to write off on your taxes 
than the standard deduction that the government is giving you. For many people, the standard deduction has just been so big, and because of these caps that we were just talking about, itemized deductions are held low, and so a, a lot of people, it's actually been a more simple tax return because they're just taking the standard deduction. That might change for yeah. a lot of folks if we revert back to the old rules. One of the other big changes, and, and if, you're, if you're a fan of the personal exemption, and I'm assuming most of you forgot about that, but the idea that, oh, for every person I get to claim, I get a $4,000 deduction. Well, that went away with these Tax Cut and Jobs Act. But the other thing is if you, if you then had a bunch of kids, we got Kevin's family, they've got three kids. Josh's family has three kids. My family, we've got three kids. Um, you might have said, oh, I'm losing a bunch of deductions. Well, the offset in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act was a doubling of the child tax credit and expanding who was able to take advantage of it before the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. So if, if tax law sunset, the, the, uh, the child tax credit is going to go from 2000 where it is right now, and you're eligible as long as your income married uh, filing jointly is below $400,000. It's going to revert back to where it was, and instead of being two grand, it was one thousand. And instead of having income all the way up to four four hundred thousand, if your income for a married couple is a hundred and ten thousand or below, you get that one thousand. If it's at that level or above, it starts getting phased out, and you might not get it at all. Mm -hmm. So the child tax credit was another enormous change that would occur if the uh, if the Tax Cut and Jobs Act sunsets. You know, the thing about the child tax credit is that it goes away in the year that your kids turn 17. But under current laws, they then become eligible for a different credit. And it's not the $2,000 that you got used to. It's now $500. That didn't exist right. back before this tax cut in 2017. So so that uh, extra, you know, catch, the, the, the extra $500 that you get a little while longer while those kids remain dependents of yours, even into young adulthood, um, it it goes away. Yep. There's other uh, inf like there's other impacts to to individuals, but let's hop over in the interest of time. Hop over to businesses. How what some of the changes will be there? Well, I think a big a big change was the qualified business income deduction. So in essence, I could get uh, a twenty percent deduction on my profit. Yeah. So as a small business, as a pass-through entity, as a, as a small business, and there are some limitations or restrictions around this, but, um, but if you, for your small business, profit, or excuse me, revenue minus your expenses gets to your net income, that net income passes through your business. The business doesn't report that as, as taxable income. It flows through to, to the owners. So the owners have to report that profit, that income on their personal tax return. Well, there was a new, there is a new uh, qualified business income deduction, QBID, that's a, approximately 20% of what that number is, is a deduction. That essentially means lower taxes for small business owners. And if, if those dollars are coming out of the business to pay that tax, and that tax has been reduced, then those dollars can stay in that business to, to either create more jobs or create new opportunities and, and so on. Um, that's just one of them, and that's to small businesses. There's a big change with, uh, with, with larger businesses, corporate tax rate and all that. We're going to share that as well as, all right, if these changes could happen, should you be making changes in your tax planning today? If so, how? We've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. I was giving you that I, I wasn't sure where you were going with blue and red. And I was like, I don't, I wouldn't step well, too was, far into it. Like, well, no, I mean the, and and that that wasn't political. It's just the blue. It it, it, it that was designed to be punitive to the blue states. That I mean, it it yeah. was. It that's not a political commentary. It's just no. There are some states um, that are that have wealthier population centers, and and much higher. Higher property state taxes, high, well, state property, taxes. Taxes. Higher property taxes, and so you, 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 you know, if you're in Chicago and your property taxes are twenty five grand, um, yeah, you're very frustrated by the salt cap, right? Because right. that doesn't even deal with your personal income tax, right? Right. So, yeah, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm aware. So, so do we? 
how how geeky do we get with the the business ones? Because there's you know bonus depreciation. I would just mention them, and and, and plus you know the because the one that we need to spend time on is the estate tax. Okay, is the the federal estate tax change, and it's going to go from basically twenty eight to fourteen, and so there are lots of folks um, that that are going to be dealing with that so uh we're heading into the third segment Mm -hmm. and um a friend that uh i have sometimes reminds me that the show is about planning yes as opposed to the fact (laughs) uh i think that's a good segue into the planning because a lot of people need to be revisiting their estate plans yeah. This year and next year so, because of that. So let's share those quickly so that we can get into the planning. Because <laughs> if the plan, if if we spend the whole ser- third segment still just talking about the law, well, let's go. and then we've nope. got the fourth segment just to do the planning, then we have we are out of balance. No, so let's hit honorable mention and then talk about estate planning. And that that is, I mean, if you talk about the estate tax change, the potential change, because the thing... That I, w- I can tell you, I can say on yeah on the air what I want to say. All right, here we go. With the potential sunsetting of the current tax cuts, how how does that need to influence your planning today? What adjustments do you need to make in your decision making and your investing and your financial life? We're helping with that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Cohorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFT studios, Kevin Cohorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. Then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. All right, still cleaning up some of the tax law changes that were brought into being with the Tax Cut and Jobs Act starting in 2018 that are set to expire or sunset at the end of next year, the end of 2025. Kevin, let's hit the last few before we get into planning concepts. Okay, so we're going we'll, we're gonna to go through these very quickly and and. I would just encourage you to talk to the person who's helping you with your tax planning. So if you're just getting tax compliance work, find someone that can help you with tax planning, especially if you're a business owner. So bonus depreciation will change. Um, The the business interest expense deduction is going to change. The net operating loss, the NOL Mm -hmm. limitation is going to change. So there are going to be some meaningful changes. But quite possibly, one of the one of the biggest changes is going to be to the federal estate tax exemption, and this doesn't make sense. Uh, really, I explain it to folks all the time, but it doesn't make sense. And so, right now, if you if you and your spouse or you alone have a net worth of twenty eight million dollars, you can die and pass twenty eight million dollars to your heirs. And if there's, I think that's the spousal amount. That's the doubling because you're right. allowed. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I'm saying if you were if you were single, it'd be 14. But if your spouse already died, you get their coupon as well. So yep. think 28. So anything above that is going to be subject to federal estate tax. And um, I like to round it up to 50. It's really close to 40, but. So just think anything above 28 million that passes to my heirs is going to be taxed at basically cut in half. And so do I need to do anything? And there are a lot of folks listening that say, all right, well, I'm I'm north of 14, um, but I'm below 28, so I don't have to do anything about it. The issue is going to be at the end of next year, it's going to go down to 14 million. So I can pass, if again, if I'm a couple, I can pass 14 million to my heirs exempt from federal estate tax. Anything north of 14 million at the end of next year is gonna be subject to federal estate tax. So this is, this is where I would, if we're, if we're getting into the planning and what types of planning do you want to do, for sure, if though if your numbers are there, you want to have a, a, a great gifting strategy um, if you're so inclined to figure out what are the things that you could be doing with some of this money to somehow bridle some of the growth so that it just doesn't it's just not running away on, on you. Um, and 
but a lot of times the gifting strategies are are basically a rounding error when when the numbers get that big. And so you say, well, what else do you do? And there's some really excellent complex estate planning stuff that you can do. Um, you're going to have a hard time, I believe, if the sunset really happens and you decide next November, so in November of 2025, you want to get an attorney to help you. It's too late it, it'll, at that point, right? It'll be too late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, to me, this just underscores the the reality that for so many people, you didn't need, at least for recent years, you didn't need a really complicated or elaborate estate plan in order to avoid these really nasty high taxes at your death or your spouse's death or anything like that. Um, Because the government was allowing you to pass so much wealth from one generation to the next without um, grabbing a hold of of it in the form of estate planning taxes, or estate taxes, I'm sorry. Um, What that means, though, is if all of a sudden it's going to be half as much income or half as much wealth that triggers these taxes in the future, new people who have grown their wealth over these recent years are going to be finding themselves uh, exposed, potentially. And if you're not paying attention to this, if if you're not adjusting your strategy or or revisiting your estate plan on a regular basis, man, you could could be caught by surprise. And ultimately, you you won't know because you will have passed away and it will be your kids or grandkids or those loved ones that that you were intending to bless with with this wealth. They're going to feel the effects. You're effectively going to make... Uh, Uncle Sam, a beneficiary, if you don't play your cards well. Yeah, but I'd say two things. Number one, one of the fra- one of the phrases we use all the time is that proper tax planning helps you pay the least amount of tax over your lifetime, if not multiple lifetimes. So it, it, even though it, if you have the mindset of, eh, I'll be dead, it won't it it won't impact me. Now it it will. That's number one. Number two is we have heard countless times from folks that have come to us after we were serving someone doing financial planning and when they passed away everything was smooth and that has led to people coming to us saying i just remember how emotional that was but how simple everything um, was facilitated and i know mine currently is not going to be that simple so i need to start doing planning so that i don't have this big financial burden on top of this enormous emotional burden when something happens to me mm-hmm. so you want to do that proactive estate planning proactive tax planning and 2024 is not too early to get going on that right as kevin was saying if you wait until close to the end of 2025 to get going it's too long of a process there will be too long of a line <laughs> outside of the attorney's office you you won't get it done on time right and people think well okay so how how bad am i feeling for someone who has a, a net worth of 28 million that they're going to pay a little extra tax well here's how you feel bad for them because if they if they own a business a manufacturing company a big farm you, you whatever it is and the heirs have to sell part of that to create estate liquidity to pay federal estate tax it is incredibly disruptive to the operations yeah. of that farm of that family business of whatever so you definitely want to make sure you you know what you're looking at cuz some it, it, sometimes you're giving up some control of some assets and you say well hey i just want to live i mean there are three there are three things that happen with your money when you die. It goes to the government, it goes to a charity, it goes to your family. It's it's pretty much that simple. So you want to be thinking through what where do I want my money to go? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and most folks aren't raising their hand saying, hey, let, can you push a bunch of this money to the government? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've we've moved from some of the law changes to some of the planning. And, and let's continue that. If the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, if these if these tax laws do sunset at the end of 2025, and we've got a new the 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 in 2026 the rules are back to where they were in 2017, what are some other planning adjustments you need to be making right now? Well, if if tax planning is all about deciding who should pay the tax on income, when should they pay the tax? What type of tax do they want to be exposed to? How do they want to pay? 
then to, to me, these tax law changes have to drive you revisiting that in your own financial life. Doing a multi-tax year uh, tax projection to think about uh, what amount of income should I be pulling into this calendar year, whether that's 2024 or 2025, before the laws change. If what you are facing right now is the best tax picture you're ever going to face for the rest of your life, what's the right amount of income to go ahead and pay tax on now? And, and you might say, well, how do I get more income? I, I can't, am I going to go ask for a raise? How do I get a bigger paycheck? What is, mm. No, we're talking about assets that you've been accumulating and tax bills that have been growing, but you haven't paid along the way. This could be money in your IRA or your 401k at work that has never been taxed, and someday it will be taxed. What if you chose that someday should be now because now is when the tax brackets are best for you, the, the tax hit that you would take would be the smallest. So you might be thinking, wait, I'm supposed to draw that money out of my 401k? No, no, no. What Josh is referring to is the concept we talk about all the time, a strategy called a Roth conversion, where you shift pre-tax dollars from your IRA or within your 401k, you shift it over to the Roth side. Well, that event, anytime money's coming out of that pre-tax side or your pre-tax IRA, it's taxable. Okay, it's taxable, but it's not penalized as long as that money lands into the Roth side of your 401k or your Roth IRA. But you've got it, you'll have to include that income on your tax return. And if you do this, which it's a great strategy when it fits, you need to be aware of well, then what's the tax impact and how will I pay those taxes? So, this is a financial planning decision you want to make with your CFP. That's just scratching the surface. What are the other changes you need to be aware of? That more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Okay. Lots to hit. Mm-hmm. So let's in get, one segment. In one segment. Okay. So. What what do you do? We want to tee it up, like <clears throat> what what we want to hit first, or how we want to do it. Um. Are you? I would go to the next page. I know, but I'm taking I I am taking notes. Okay. Uh, for what I need to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um. I, so grocery I, list. Yeah. Pro- probably. You know. Roth funding. We were hitting Roth conversions. I yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't know if there's a certain priority. Yeah, that's good. So we we'll Let's, we'll have time. I I'd love to hear your your takes on Roth funding, and I'll I'll back clean up. Yeah. Um, because I've got the right one. Good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast. Wherever you listen, search the Wise Money Show. Subscribe to it or follow us there and rate the program there. We appreciate it. Talking about planning around the potential sunsetting of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, where essentially taxes could go up for the average the average American household and, uh, and and we'll see. Right now on the campaign trail, White House is saying they are going to let them expire. And uh, and so I, I think the fate of these tax cuts will depend on the upcoming election. And, uh, and we'll see. So planning is all about, well, what things should you or should you uh, not consider doing right now in the face of an uncertain future? So you don't want to lock yourself into, well, I'm putting all my eggs, all my uh, all my chips uh, in, in this bag and then have you know the tax laws go a different direction. This is about planning perspective with your CFP and maybe starting to hedge a little bit should these tax laws change. We left off with Roth conversions. And if you've been, if you were listening to that saying, nah, I, you know, I've been listening to you guys and all my 401k contributions are going in Roth, so I'm good. Well, what about your employer, your company match? Those match dollars just now are allowed, you you are allowed to elect those as Roth, but no one's been able to do it just yet. Um, so if you've been getting company match, even if your contributions are going in Roth, your company match is pre-tax, there might be some dollars that you should be doing a Roth conversion for. But one of the things, if if tax laws are set to increase, or excuse me, tax rates are set to increase, funding Roth may make more sense. Contributing to your Roth 401k, contributing to your Roth IRA. There's three times, I, and you need to do planning because it just it, it depends on uh, all six areas of your financial life and your goals. But when you are early in your career, consider Roth, okay? Because the 
those dollars will have more time to grow and all that growth will be tax free. So when you're early in your career two, when you believe you're going to pay higher taxes out there in the future, because you either think tax rates are going up or you think your income's going up and you could be in a higher tax bracket, then that means advantage Roth. And then third, if there is market, well, when you think the market's going to be higher in the future, and of course, always, but if there's, if we've recently had a pullback in the market, then advantage Roth, because then those dollars you're investing will, the inevitable rebound, whenever that occurs, will be tax-free. So if tax rates looks like, look like they're going up, maybe this is the time you consider funding the Roth side of your 401k or your Roth IRA instead of going pre-tax. Which- and notice though that you could say that every single year of your life, totally. those, those rules of thumb that you were just sharing have nothing to do with the tax laws changing in, in a year and a half or, or so. We just know that there's the threat of a change coming. But even if uh, these rules don't expire, if Congress takes action and they extend it for another couple years or, or something like that, it doesn't matter because the question still remains. It's, do you believe that you will be in a higher tax bracket out there in the future? And that could be because eventually the laws will swing back the other direction. Tax rates will go higher. It's just a matter of time, you, you might say. Uh, that's that's the laws changing. But what about your circumstances as well? You know, your, your own income could increase. You could um, see some great financial success in the future. That drives you into a higher tax bracket. Or what about losing a spouse also? You change uh, your, your tax filing status from married to single, and now you're finding yourself in a higher tax bracket potentially. Yep. So these are, these are important things to be considering regardless of, whether, of what happens in 2026. Yeah, you, you really want to have a good sense for what should I pay taxes on and what is the purpose of these dollars. If you're a business owner and you're, the money you're putting into your 401k is going to fund your charitable contributions yep. from age 70 and a half on, don't do the Roth uh, side mm-hmm. of the 401k. Yep. So there, mm-hmm. And I, I just have to brag a little bit on a listener. I'm going to call him a power listener, a super listener. I don't know what you'd yeah, call there him. there you go. But um, this, this listener came, traveled a couple hours. He said, I don't want to do this over Zoom or Teams. I want to sit in your office and talk to you. So he came, brought all this stuff. We sat down. And as we were going, he wants to be retired. And he had a good chunk of Roth money in his 401k. And I said, well, do you have a Roth IRA outside? And he said, yeah, I opened it uh, four years ago. I've got 600 bucks in it. Mm-hmm. So he, as a mad listener Fantastic. to the Wise Money Show, he was l- listening, tuning in and saying, hey, I got to do this. He knew about uh, certain ways to access your 401k early. Um, just did a really nice job. He actually had asked a question and gotten it answered yeah. on the Wise Money Show. So um, if you're listening to all of this and you say it doesn't make sense and I don't have someone who's helping me. Um, we love to serve our listeners. Yeah, uh, we're not the only ones who do or who can, but we we'd love to help you. Yeah, you know the the, the reason this uh, idea of doing a Roth conversion can make sense is because you're taking dollars that have never been taxed, choosing to pay the tax now before you really have to. You might not be ready to spend this money in retirement or or pull it out of an IRA or out of your 401k, but you're choosing to be proactive pull that income into this year, pay the tax on it now so that you can avoid tax on it forever into the future. Another place where there could be some taxes brewing within your financial life is if you have investments or assets that you purchased at a low point and they've run up in value over the years without you selling. It could be some farmland, could be some stocks you bought years ago and they've, they've run up in value, but they're not inside of any kind of tax shelter. So the day that you sell, there's going to be income created on your tax return. That might be something that you've been avoiding like crazy for years. Don't don't want to do it. Don't want to pay the tax on it. Well, maybe now it's something to consider again. Uh, should I take some gains? Should I pay some tax at today's rates while I'm in these brackets instead of uh, what what could be coming in 2026? If the standard deduction is going to be reduced meaningfully 
or if you've got young kiddos and the tax credit that you get for uh, for for having them as dependents is going to change meaningfully, then then maybe. Okay, so, so here's uh, this one's not popular, but I have again, some more kids. It, but it, but again, this one this one makes sense whether the tax laws do sunset or not. Update your budget. Update your budget. Make yes. sure you've got margin in your cash flow. Build that emergency fund and pay down debt. So th- those are the four things. Why? Well, it is not political spin. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act did actually reduce taxes by about two grand for the average household. And therefore, if they sunset in tax and you're going to pay about two, two grand more in tax, where's that money going to come from? You need to make sure that that doesn't disrupt your financial life. And to the extent you don't have an emergency fund set up, to the extent you don't have margin in your monthly budget, to the extent that uh, you've got too much debt, too much fixed obligations, therefore there's not enough fl- uh, uh, variability or, or flexibility, um, then you, you could really feel th- this pinch. So right. updating your budget now, paying down debt, building up cash will help you prepare if taxes do go up. Yeah, I mean, if this sun sets and things bounce back to where they were, and there's been the promise that uh, if you're if you make less than four hundred thousand, taxes won't go up for you. And I would put that in the if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor category. Yeah. So it's 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 like I mean it sounds good until you look and you're like, wait a minute, my taxes actually did just go up. You know, even if we zoomed out and and we weren't focused on all the nitty gritty changes to the tax law, if we just said with any kind of certainty, hey, out there in the future. The government may get a little bit more grabby. They might start taking more dollars from you. If that's the case, if that could happen, then the stronger that your financial life is, the better, right? And and I'm talking about your present financial position as well. You might be someone who is always counted on a big refund every spring to help bail out the budget or or help you cover an emergency or an unexpected big expense or something. What if that doesn't come? You know, what if you go from refund mode to just breaking even and uh, you don't have the big flood of, of cash flow in the spring? You need to start building that for yourself right now, having more liquidity. Uh, Mike was referring to the budget and just having more margin, more flexibility in your, in your financial life. It's not too early to start making those adjustments now. The longer that you get used to this before the tax laws change, the, the stronger the position you're going to be in, the more ready you'll be to, to make those adjustments. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would also make sure your investment strategies are sound if all these tax law changes impact businesses that could impact the investment world at corporate tax rates. If they go back up to 35%, that could impact the investment world. So make sure you've got sound investment strategies. All right. That's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.